So missing the presence of dysphagia can result in serious health consequences in our patients with stroke. Therefore, it is critical that we implement only highly accurate tools in our clinical care of these patients. For example, the sensitivity and interclass correlation coefficient, or the reliability, for a screening tool should each be greater than 90%. Our research on 311 patients with stroke in five different acute and rehabilitation facilities has proven that the TOR-BEST tool not only measures up to this minimum criteria, but goes beyond. That is, the TOR-BEST is a highly reliable and accurate tool. It has a high reliability of 92%, it also has a high accuracy with an overall sensitivity of 91% in a mixed group of acute and rehab patients with stroke. And the accuracy of the TORBEST is even higher at 96% in only acute patients with stroke. These high levels of reliability and accuracy were derived from studies that had high quality research design, that is low risk of bias, and included patients with all severities of dysphagia from mild inefficiency to significant aspiration. The TOR-BEST therefore meets and surpasses the required statistical criteria as a reliable and accurate detection for dysphagia in patients with stroke. Commonly included in dysphagia screening tools is the administration of water swallows and the TOR-BEST also includes water swallows. However, based on our research findings, not all water swallow tests are equally accurate. It is necessary, according to our findings, to administer up to the, our recommended 10 teaspoons of water as included in Part B of the TORBEST. Our research clearly indicates that it is indeed necessary, and now I will show the evidence from this work. On the graph here, the y-axis labels the sensitivity or the accuracy of the TORBEST. The x-axis on the horizontal labels the number of teaspoons of water to achieve that level of accuracy. And you can see that this graph depicts the results of a sensitivity analysis where the level of accuracy along the y-axis is depicted for each of the 10 teaspoons along the x-axis. So in order to achieve the TOR-BEST 96% accuracy, it was imperative that the screeners continue to administer teaspoons of water until the patient fails or up into 10 teaspoons. Certainly, if a patient failed with only one teaspoon or perhaps five teaspoons, the screener is instructed to stop the TOR-BEST administer no more water, fail the patient, and then refer the patient to a speech-language pathologist for full assessment. However, if the screener stops the screen after the first teaspoons of water and the patient scored a normal result, then the accuracy of the TORBEST would drop from 96% to 28%, and you can see that along the y-axis. This low level is well below acceptable clinical levels. Likewise, if the screener advances to only five teaspoons with a normal finding, then only a 79% accuracy is possible. And again, you can see that on the Y axis. So these data clearly show that need for screeners to administer up to 10 teaspoons of water if there were no previous signs of abnormal swallowing with any of the previously administered teaspoons of water. This is quite an important point for the TORBEST and especially important given that some other water protocols from other tools stop well before the 10 teaspoons of water. During our development of the TORBEST, we pilot tested it for its practicality. In other words, 
we wanted to know how it would perform in the real world setting, such as an acute stroke hospital unit where clinicians are busy managing large volumes of patients and have little time to waste. We know that in order for a screening tool like the TORBEST to meet the standard of a good screening tool, it needs to be simple. It needs to be reliable in its administration. It needs to be administered, scored, and documented quickly so that it doesn't add to the burden of a busy clinical environment. Our pilot testing showed that on average, the TORBEST administration including execution of the screening, registering the score, and documentation into the patient's medical record was nine minutes, well less than 12 minutes. In other words, in, in about nine minutes, the newly admitted acute patient with stroke was identified correctly by the screener to either be or not be at risk for dysphagia. In only nine minutes, those patients at risk could be then referred to a speech-language pathologist for a full comprehensive assessment, and those not at risk could advance to oral meds and nutritional intake. This level of efficiency in a busy medical setting is critical and indeed contributes to the value of having a dysphagia screening tool like the TORBEST. Upon completion of the TORBEST training for the SLP Dysphagia Expert course, speech-language pathologists will have unlimited access to a suite of resources delivered through a secure website that will enable them to conduct live TORBEST screener training and provide ongoing support to their trained screeners. These resources include a turnkey web-based slide presentation to use in training screeners. You will also have access to the TORBEST form in six languages, short quizzes to access screener knowledge and skills, and pamphlets to support learners as they complete screener training. On this website, we also have resources to support speech-language pathologists in their implementation of the TORBEST. In addition, my Swallowing Lab provides speech-language pathologists ongoing support and advice as needed during TORBEST implementation, screener training, and beyond.